In addition to the two data models, there are many different file formats. Some formats are designed to store vector data and some raster data. In this task, we'll explore the file formats included with the Lab 1 data. So let's explore the file formats of the three rasters we loaded in task 1. I can double click on each of them and go to the metadata tab and I'll see under the driver category what the file format is. So this first one is a USGSDEM. Click on this next raster and I'll see that this is a GeoTIFF. And on the Landfire EVT raster I'll see that this is an Erdas Imagine image. Now I'll bring up QGIS browser and navigate to the Lab 1 data. I see that there are three raster data sets, three shape files, some XML files, and a couple of text files. There's also two folders, this info folder and this vegetation folder. These two folders comprise an older file format for storing vector data called a coverage. The info folder holds the attributes and the vegetation folder is the layer name and stores the spatial features. Sometimes you'll see data files ending in E00. An E00 file is an exported coverage and is known as the interchange file format. This format is for data sharing as it's a file containing the info and the layer folders together and it's more easily transferred. E00 files can also be read natively by QGIS. So now I'm going to bring back up QGIS desktop and I'll add the coverage data by using the add vector data button. Up to this point I've always used the default source type of file. Now I'll switch to the source type of directory and I'll change the source type to ArcInfo binary coverage. Now I'll click browse, browse to my lab 3 data, pardon me, GST 103 lab 1 data and I'll just select the vegetation folder and click select folder then I'll click open. The select vector layers to add window comes up and here I'm being asked to choose which components of the coverage to add to QGIS. This is because of a special property that coverages have. They can store multiple geometries. So thinking back a shape file is either point line or polygon. It can't have multiple geometries. However a coverage can have all three geometries. This vegetation data set has two polygon components, the PAL and the Landfire EVT, a point component, and a line string component. I'll select the Landfire EVT layer and click OK to add it to QGIS. This is a vector version of the Landfire EVT raster layer. And I can do things with this coverage layer like I can with any other vector layer in QGIS. I can right click on it and open up the attribute table. I can bring up the layer properties for it and I could style it how I'd like to do. And if I wanted this to be in a shapefile format, I would simply right click on it, choose Save As, and specify the output format of Esri shapefile, browse to where I wanted that save, and I'm done. Now I'll switch back to QGIS browser. And I'll navigate to this Lab 1 data folder again and select the data folder and it switches to the param tab. Let me expand this. And notice this recreation site point KMZ file. This doesn't appear as a GIS layer in the layer tree on the left hand side. KMZ is a compressed KML file. Remember KML stands for keyhole markup language. And both of these are the native format for Google Earth and it's a very common geospatial file format these days. So in order for QGIS desktop to read this data, the KMZ file must be decompressed. Now we'll decompress this file and I'm going to bring up Windows Explorer open to this Lab 1 data folder and find that KMZ file here. And the method for uncompressing a zipped file will depend on your operating system. Each operating system comes with compression software that allows you to compress and uncompress files. Additionally, there are many good third-party software applications for doing this too. Here I'm on a Windows 7 computer and I'm going to be using a package called 7-Zip which is an open source compression software. So I'll just right click on this file, go to the 7-Zip in the context menu and choose extract here. And you'll see now a KML file appears. So it unzips it so that we have just the raw KML file. Now I'll go back to QGIS desktop and add this to my map by using the add vector data button 
clicking browse. I'll change my filter here to keyhole markup language so I can see that one layer. Click open and click open. So as with the coverage, I'm presented with a select vector layers to add window and there are many different features in this KML file. I'm going to select the, well first I'm going to expand this so I can see them all. I'm going to select the picnic site layer and the trailhead layer and click OK. So it adds each of those as a point layer. I can see a couple of them here. So that's how you can deal with KMZ files. You simply have to uncompress the KMZ file and then you can bring in the KML into QGIS. So in this task we focused on file formats and you learned how to work with a couple file formats that require a few extra steps the coverage and KMZ files. In the next lab you'll learn how to create a new Spatialite geodatabase and import project data into it.